I woke up to an emergency alert at 6 a.m. this morning on my phone. Checking my phone, the alert read, Go indoors immediately and remain inside. Await further instructions. After living here for almost 10 years, I've only ever received a handful of emergency alerts which all presented themselves as tests for the emergency alert system. Generally, generally I live my life pretty freely and I don't take life too seriously. Unfortunately for me, this means I'm not the type of person who prepares for the worst to happen. Which I now realize is what I should have been doing. I thought to myself, better safe than sorry. So after getting out of bed, I immediately headed downstairs and checked that both the front and back doors were locked and deadbolted. I always lock my doors at night, but I needed to verify this simply for sanity's sake. Even if I didn't know exactly what was going on, I live in a decently sized two-story house that I've worked my ass off to make a reality. The windows downstairs all had solid security screens on them, meaning there was no need for me to check the locks on them. After securing the house, I went upstairs to my bedroom and tried to make a couple of calls. Initially, I called my boss. I couldn't just expect to get the day off work without explaining the situation, if there even was a situation. The phone rang for some time before directing me to her voicemail system. I left a message explaining the emergency alert that I received and told her to call me back when she gets the voicemail, or at least the chance to discuss what happened. I tried calling my parents, but again, I was sent straight to their voicemail system. I think at this point is when I started to get worried. My parents live almost two hours away from me, and they're always awake at the ass crack of dawn. They never left the house before 8 a.m., but I still tried to convince myself that they were busy with something else. So again, I left a message for them and told them to get back to me when they could. My phone ding. A message from one of my colleagues at work, John. He was asking whether I'd received the emergency alert, too, and if I knew anything about why it was sent out. I replied immediately and told him I didn't know any more than he did, but I'll let him know if I find anything out. I needed to calm down now. There's no use worrying over something yet that I didn't even know about. I decided to shower first before having a quick breakfast and turning on the television to get my mind off whatever could be going on. At this point, it was about 7.30 a.m., the time I'd usually be leaving for work. I'm not one to purposely ignore warning signs, so I'd rather get an angry text from my boss than get caught up in whatever causes the emergency alert to be sent out in the first place. When I turned the television on, the same emergency alert sound invaded my ears. The volume was so high from the music that I was listening to the night before that I had to dive for the remote to turn it down. The same words that my phone woke me up to were now the only words on the screen. Go indoors immediately and remain inside. Await further instructions. And now I was extremely worried. I was realizing this couldn't be an accident or a test. I'd never seen any emergency warnings like this, let alone it being presented on every channel that I flicked through. Without any additional information, there was no way for me to know what was going on or how to prepare for it. So after turning the volume from the television all the way down to get a break from that blaring alert sound, I realized how quiet it was outside. No cars commuting, no birds chirping, neighbors chatting, any airplanes flying overhead, nothing. I never realized how accustomed I'd become to those background sounds. This lack of background sound made me feel incredibly uneasy, like, like I could sense something was wrong regardless of the emergency alerts. All of my blinds were still shut, so I hadn't had a chance or even thought about looking outside until this point. There wasn't any specific instructions regarding looking outside anyway, so I didn't, I didn't really think anything of it, but I thought that it would be safest to look outside my bedroom window, which leads out to this small balcony through a sliding glass door. I went into my room and I pulled on the string that rotates the vertical blinds, and immediately my room flooded with natural light and the warmth of the sun that hit me. So I'd always loved the warmth of direct sunlight, so I made sure that my windows faced towards the sunrise, and subsequently towards the street. However, after opening the blinds, what I saw made me immediately drop to the floor, out of sight from the street. I barely got a glimpse of them, but they looked extremely hostile. These creatures, they were, they were nothing like any animal I'd ever seen. They were gathered in a circle in front of the house across from mine. It looked like they were, there were about eight of them. They were gaunt and tall, and appeared as though they were wearing a suit of skin that was far too tight for their bodies. 
Their bones seemed to be almost protruding from their skin. They had no, no facial features besides a pair of dark, sunken eyes that appeared completely white in contrast with their extremely dark skin. These, these things were far from human, but were standing on two legs like us. I'm glad that they didn't see me. If they can see it all, that is. I don't think I'd be writing this right now if they had seen me. After dropping to the floor, I immediately closed the blinds again. I'd never had a panic attack before now, but now, realizing the actual danger I was in, it sure felt like I was going through something similar. Nothing that was going on was normal. With, without, without confidence, I dialed the emergency telephone number on my phone, and immediately a recorded message sounded through my speaker. Go indoors immediately and remain inside. Await further instructions. Go indoors immediately and remain inside. Await further instructions. This message pierced my ears and continued looping until I ended the call. A couple of hours passed by. I went through my entire phone list, trying to get into contact with anyone I possibly could. Not even John wouldn't respond. Not a single person answered their phone or responded to the frantic voicemails that I left. At the moment, I was safe in my house, but how long? How long would that last? I didn't even know what these creatures were, let alone what they were capable of. I just knew that they weren't here to make friends. Eventually, I decided to make my way downstairs to take stock of the food that I had. I don't know how long I had to wait these creatures out, but the power was still working at the moment, so everything in the fridge and the freezers was still okay. The water was still running, I mean, obviously, since I was able to take a shower, but again, I didn't know how long that would last. I decided to fill up the bathtub and the downstairs bathroom in case the water stops running anytime soon, so at least I'd have maybe 150 liters of drinkable water in that case. Curiosity got the better of me. See, after taking stock of the food, filling up the tub. See, I, I couldn't I couldn't shake the feeling that I was already going a little mad. Just yesterday, everything had been completely fine. And now I couldn't get in touch with a single person, and there were creatures outside on the street that I'd never seen before. I needed to look again. I needed to know that what I saw was real and not something that I'd made up in my head. This all felt like like a weird dream that I needed to wake up from. But I knew this was real. I went back upstairs to my bedroom and I peeked through the blinds. Surprisingly, the creatures were no longer where I had seen them earlier. I noticed the door to the house across the street looked like it had been scratched through. There were these long scratch marks along the length of the wooden doors and a large hole in the center. They'd broken their way into that house, but, there was, but they were no longer anywhere to be seen. That is until I noticed something staring straight back at me through the upstairs window of that same house. The deep, sunken eyes I stared into seemed like they'd be, they'd be able to steal the soul from my body if I looked for too long and after my brain recognized what I was staring at, I leapt backwards away from the blinds. That thing had no doubt seen me and I paced back and forth thinking of what I should do at this point when I, when I heard a horrendous sound coming from downstairs and I, I quietly made my way down the stairs towards the sound and the sound pierced my ears. Suddenly like something sharp being dragged across metal. And that's when I realized, that's when I realized they were trying to get inside. The metal security screen door that I installed was being barraged by them. I started moving the bookcases that I had by the entrance against the front door, and now the sun was setting. And they were mercilessly going at it. There's no way I could fend off those things barehanded. That's... That's when I remember the gift my dad gave me. For my 25th birthday. See, I was never, I was never really into guns. I really had a need for one, but at that time, a time like this, it was quite necessary if it had to come to that. I ran back upstairs into the guest room where I had stored everything that was gifted to me for my birthday this year. And the pistol was in its case. I removed it. I loaded it with the ammunition that my dad had shown me how to use. So I'd, n I'd never fired a gun. So the, this still remains as a last resort. And now I'm sitting in my room. Recording this, the pistol sitting on my bedside table, and I can still hear those creatures downstairs. I don't know exactly what I should do. Should I run? Should I fight? If you're hearing this, please respond.
Hey there kids, and happy holidays. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify and on iTunes and on Google Play and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon, especially, thank you so much. Like Joey Gilbert, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Steven Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Muehmeister, Eliminator 86, Nubsky, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Center, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea, including a Mr. Creepypasta tea that has me on it dabbing. D don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea because she said it wasn't professional. I think it's the, whatever. Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day, forever. Sweet dreams, kids.